a friend sent me this article about how to be able to eat low carb as a vegetarian or a vegan. And it's been produced and published on this blog slash website called Authority Nutrition, which calls themselves an evidence-based approach to, uh, to both diet and nutrition. And in the article it starts off, I'm just going to give you the, f the first little bit of the blurb. It's, cutting back on carbohydrates is not very complicated. Just simply uh, replace the sugars and starches in your diet with vegetables, meat, fish, eggs, nuts and fats. It seems pretty straightforward unless you don't eat meat. Conventional di uh, low-carb diets rely heavily on carbohydrates, which makes them unsustainable for vegetarians and vegans. Now, not only is it unsuitable for vegetarians and vegans, it's unsustainable for everybody. I repeat that again. Low-carb diets are unsustainable for everybody. It will screw up your health in the medium to long term completely and that is a guarantee you might lose a bunch of weight in the short term but you'll screw up your health long term and if you wanting an even more passionate first-hand account of what low carb diets do to you listen to this testimonial story of what happened to Lily of uh, legit nutrition and she's based in Hawaii. Lily of Nutri Nut Legit Nutrition in Hawaii posted this video just a couple of days ago and goes on about exactly what the dangers are of a low carb diet long term and how it affects not only your body but your entire mental state as well. So listen to this and listen to it carefully. I was living in New Zealand. I had a great job working as a produce manager at a local organic health food store. I lived in a cute little flat with two awesome roommates. Things were going well, except that two years previously, I had finally been diagnosed as hypothyroid. At this time in my life, I would wake up in the morning absolutely exhausted. I would take my pills, my thyroid hormones, my DHEA, my hydrocortisone, my estrogen, my progesterone, my selenium, my zinc, my vitamin A, my vitamin D3, and my iodine to support my thyroid health. At this point as well, she had told me to go on a calorie restricted diet, and she had also told me to go on a very high protein diet, which as we know now, high protein pretty much equals high fat. And so for breakfast, which I would push back as far as I possibly could so that I could save calories and also save myself from starting the awful hypoglycemia roller coaster early in the day, I would have like two eggs. I was allowed like one green apple a day. Which brings us to the night that I was 25 days into a 30 day no sugar candida cleanse. I wasn't even allowed to have the one green apple a day. It was literally no fruit. And I remember those days where I would have to go to work and then I would always walk home from work to save on bus fare because I had no money because I had paid all of my money to my naturopath. So I got home and I felt so hopeless and so exhausted because this, this stupid candida cleanse, this low calorie, absolutely no carbohydrates, I had done everything right diet was supposed to be the thing that was going to fix me and I felt worse than I ever had and I remember sitting down on my bed and looking at myself in the mirror and saying this is it I can't I cannot do this anymore and I said seven days I'm giving you seven days to find something that makes you feel better or I have to kill myself because I can't take this anymore. And I remember thinking about my parents and my boyfriend and how awful it was going to be for all of them to live through me doing that. And I thought about never seeing my dogs again and trying to decide like how I was going to do it so that it wouldn't hurt and how I was going to do it so that, you know, when my roommates found me 
it wasn't horribly traumatic for them. And I was thinking about how much of a relief it would finally be not to have to wake up feeling the way I felt every morning and being trapped in this body that was betraying me while my health just eroded out from under my feet when I was doing everything that I possibly could. So I knew I had seven days and I went to sleep and I got up the next couple days and I went to work and then I came home and then I just dedicated myself to doing research as much as I could to try to find something that would put me back together again. And three days later, I found a video by Freely and she was saying pretty much the opposite of everything I had ever been told. And at this point, Freely only had like maybe a dozen videos. I remember watching those and feeling hopeful and yet at the same time apprehensive because every other diet plan that I had ever tried had just thrown me under the bus even more. I went to work the next day and I was a freaking produce manager so it was perfect and I completely changed my diet. I cut out all the fat, I cut out all the extra protein. And I remember it wasn't but two fucking days later of feeding my body what it needed, carbohydrates, that I felt like a new fucking person. So I kept up with it, mostly just relieved that I didn't have to fucking kill myself anymore. And two months into this diet, I went to go see my naturopath and told her that I went off all of the supplements and medications and that I felt great doing the exact opposite that she had told me. And she dismissed me as a client because I was non-compliant. Best thing that could have happened. Calorically restrictive diets don't work. Low carb diets don't work. They will fuck up your health. They spout bullshit that doesn't work for them, that won't work for their followers. Now, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... They promote caloric restriction, which will crash your metabolism, make you gain weight, and ruin your health. And they do it for profit. Do you understand that? Because when they give you an unsustainable diet plan and you fail on it, they can blame it on your willpower and keep you as a customer. And then when someone comes along telling the actual goddamn truth and have the fucking results to back it up, what do they do? Instead of actually worrying about not just, not just their own health, but about the health of the millions upon millions of their followers, the young girls that don't know any better. What do they do? They try to silence the person that's telling the truth to protect their profits, not your health. I don't care about the people like me sitting in my bedroom floor trying to plan my suicide because the diets weren't working. And that kind of despair Despicably selfish behavior is fucking inexcusable. Like, for fuck's sake, would you step back for one second and realize that it's not about you? Now, we don't have the scientific proof this is true, but... It's about the young, vulnerable, impressionable, naive kids that are listening to your fucking irresponsible message and taking that shit to heart, like me when I was 13 years old, trying to eat your stupid 1600 calorie a day diet and digging my own fucking grave with it. But it's not about those kids. It's how many millions you get to roll in next year. The millions of girls and women and boys and men who are hurt by your message are the priority. I'm sorry, have I gotten verbally abusive? Oops. So that's the story. Low carb diets will screw you up over the long term. That's my take on the matter. And feel free to post any comments, questions, criticisms you have in the comment section down below. Share this out amongst your friends. Thumbs up if you like this type of content. And remember to hit the subscribe button. Stay subscribed for all the new content that comes out to you late daily. Remember, stay carbed up for the win. See you next time. Cheers. Coach Ever. That next.